Uh, Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munger, um, when you were raising your first investment funds, how did you go about attracting investors? And once you had your first funds and your first investors, how did you go about growing them? It sounds to me like a man that's about ready to start a hedge fund. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, in my case, I'd moved back here from New York in March or so of, of uh, 1956, and a few members of my family said we'd like you to manage our investments just like I did when I was selling securities out here before I went to New York. And I didn't like being in the security selling business, uh, partly because if I sold somebody a stock at 20 and it went down to 10, I wanted to buy more, but I couldn't face the idea of people that had bought it at 20 and based only on confidence in me, not because they understood it and now they were feeling depressed. And it was, it just wasn't, it wasn't very satisfactory. I, I could not do as well managing money if people were watching every decision as I could if I did it in a room all by myself. So was I just told these seven members of the family, uh, one of them, actually it was my roommate in college and his mother, uh, they, they came in also. I, I said, you know, if you'd like to join up in a partnership, I'm not going to tell you what's going on, but I will tell you that I will be doing with my own money what... I'm doing with yours. Later on, I put all my own money in. Uh, and it just was very slow. Uh, uh, a few months later, uh, Graham Newman that I'd worked for was liquidating, and, and a fellow named Homer Dodge asked Ben Graham what he should do with the money he was getting out of Graham Newman. He said, this kid used to work for me, and he's okay. And so he came out and went in with me, and another fellow late in the fall saw, had seen the notice of partnership formed, and some legal paper, and he said, what's this, and came in with me. And it just, we just stumbled along, and for uh, almost six years, I operated out of my house, no employee. I, I kept all the books. I filed the tax returns. I, you know, went out and picked up the stocks personally and stuck them in a safe deposit box. When Charlie came along, I kept chiding him about the fact I met him in 1959, and I said, you know, law is okay as a hobby, but, but... It's not, no place for a man with your intellect to uh, spend his time. And, and it, well, I'll let Charlie take it over from there. <laughs> it actually took me a long time to leave what it was a family business. And uh, so any of you who are having a slow time accepting good ideas, why well, should be cheered by my example because it was some years after you started working on me. And you pounded on me. And I slowly got the point. <laughs> and he was asking about attracting money. Well, of course, it helps if you conducted yourself in life so that other people trust you. <laughs> and then it helps even is, more. Is he explaining why I was so slow and he was so fast? <laughs> then it helps even more if other people are right to trust you. <sighs> So the formula is quite simple. We're first one, then the other. Unfortunately, with the present fee structure, just attracting money rather than performing with it can be enormously lucrative. So it, it, uh, the skill of attracting money may be, uh, at least in the short run, and maybe the intermediate run, it may be a more important quality than the ability to manage money. Uh, the, but we, neither one of us ever charged any fixed fee of any kind. And am I right on that, Charlie?